Today I'm going to show you how to wire an outlet, common mistakes to avoid, and tips to make your job a lot easier. If you're not comfortable working with electricity, I recommend you hire a licensed electrician. First thing I always do is turn off the power. First we'll look at electrical boxes. This first one is for new construction where you have exposed stud walls. Now setting your outlet box is very simple. There's two little nubs on the side of the box. That's the thickness of the sheetrock, half inch. You just set that up against the stud, push it back until those nubs hit the stud, and pound it in. With your wire pulled, you want to bring it into the box. You just take your screwdriver, a hammer, punch that out, and bring your wire right through there. And then secure the wire within six inches of the box with a staple. You want to drive that staple down snug, but not far enough to damage the wire. If you already have a house that's sheetrocked and you want to add an outlet or add a switch, then you'd use a remodel box. This box, you outline the box with a pencil, cut the sheetrock out, slide the box in the hole that you just cut out, and you tighten these screws down. You see that tab flipped up, and the sheetrock will pinch in between this tab and this tab that popped up, and hold this box in place, and you can pull the wire up through and add an outlet or a switch. Now I'll show you how to wire an outlet receptacle. You've got brass screws on one side that go with the smaller slot. That's where your hot line goes to, the black wire or red. On the other side, you've got the silver screws. And the neutral wire or the white wire goes to the neutral screw. And then you've got a green wire and the bare wire or the copper wire, ground wire, goes to the green screw. Now for this example, I've got a 14-3 wire here, which means there's a white wire, black wire, a red wire, and a copper ground wire under this paper. This one here is a 14-2 wire, which is what I used in the barn. I've got a white wire, a black wire, and then a copper ground wire. I'll show you how to strip the sheathing off this, you want to be very careful and cut right in the middle. I don't use a real sharp blade, but you cut in the middle, being careful not to cut the insulation off the white or black wire. And I just get it started a little bit, and then you can peel it back and strip it back. And all you have to do is just do the beginning a little bit like that. And then you can just hold the wire and pull it. Get to about a half inch. That's good there. And I'll cut off the extra. And pull the paper back. Tear that off. I want to leave about six inches of wire. It's about the length of my pliers here. So we'll cut that off. Now on the back of the receptacle, and some will be indented, is a stripping gauge. It's five-eighths of an inch long. And what you do is take your wire, put it against the stripping gauge, you can hold your finger in place, take your wire stripper, so I'll line that up with the 14, wrap it around and hold the wire and pull that off. That gives you the perfect length for securing the wire onto the receptacle. There's two ways to connect wires to your receptacle. 
There's the screw terminals, which is what we're going to use. And there's also push terminals, just like the screws. If you use a push terminal or you need to release one, there's a little release slot here. You take a real small screwdriver and push that in there and you can pull your wire out. Some inspectors will not let you use these push terminals and a lot of people have problems with these. So I never use them. I always use the screw terminals. Now that the wires are stripped, we need to make a J or a shepherd hook. And it's real simple. You just put the wire in that little hole and turn. And there's your shepherd hook or your J hook. You can also, if you don't have these pliers, use a needle nose pliers and you just take this and twist it over. Get the same thing. Now with that done, I hook up the ground wire first. So I hook it on like that. You don't want to put it on like this because when you tighten it's going to have a tendency to want to push that wire out. So you go make the shepherd's hook or the J hook in the same direction that you'll be tightening the screw. So you just set that on there, take your screwdriver, tighten that down, and you want to make sure you're good and snug. And double check that. Then I'll do the black wire, which is the hot wire. Put it on, and there's a little stop there. I just lean it against there. Tighten the screw, and we're all set. Now when putting these wires on, you can use either screw on each side. It doesn't matter because they're tied together by this little clip here. If you want to separate this outlet from this outlet, you want to pull this little pin out, this little tab, you just grab that, break that out, and what that'll do is separate these two. You don't have to pull this one out on this side. You only have to do the side where the black hot wire goes, which is the brass screws. If you want this top one to be switched, your red wire from your switch would go to the top. The black hot wire that's always hot would go to the bottom. This would stay hot. The red wire to the top, and as you do the switch, this would go on and off for like a floor lamp or a table lamp. But in this case, that's left on there. It doesn't matter which screw you hook this up to. You want to go in the clockwise form. I push against the stop there and screw it down. One thing important that I want to show you is when you strip these wires and set it in the terminal screw, you want to make sure that the insulation does not get underneath the screw. I don't know if you can see that, but that insulation is on this side of the screw. So when I tightened this down, there was no insulation obstructing the contact on this side. The other thing is, you don't want to strip too much. If you get that strip down here, and you got bare wire showing here, it's possible when you tuck that wire in, that this ground wire could touch that wire, or if you have a metal box, that wire could be touched, and you're going to create problems with your receptacle. The other thing that you want to do is tighten these screws that you're not using down. When they're left like that, they're sticking out. These are tucked in nice. And when those are sticking out, you've got the same problem where they could be shorted out by the ground wire, another wire if you've got other wires in the box. So it's very important. Tighten these down. Get them out of the way. That'll save you from problems. 
Some electricians also, after they get, get these wired like this, they like to take electrical tape and tape around these connections to ensure there's no contact. You want to make sure these wires are tight, not loose at all. If you get a loose wire, you can get an overheating problem and it can also cause a fire. Here's an outlet that overheated. You can see the plastic plate has melted and it's actually a little bit of a brown color. Make sure your wire connections are tight. And we'll just take our wires, fold them in out of the way in the box. Now all we have left, throw the cover plate on. Now that our wiring job is all complete, we can turn on the breaker and test the outlet. All right, with the breaker back on, we'll go ahead and test the outlet. This is what the inspectors use. And what you want is the two yellow lights lit and not the red light or any other combination. Plug it in and we're looking good. And now for the test, I'll plug the radio in. We've got power. We're all set in the barn. And that's how you wire an outlet. If this video is a help to you, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And I look forward to helping you with other projects online. Minnie, what are you doing with my glove? <laughs>